Hello, and thanks for joining me at the lovely Circuito Estoril. As it turns out, it's my home track uh, because I live about 25 kilometers uh, across town. And here we have the brand new Lamborghini Temerario. Very significant car. It's the all new replacement for the Huracan, which was Lamborghini's most successful car to date. 29,000 sold. So this has a big job to do. And uh, it is brand new from the ground up. So everything is new brand new aluminum space frame chassis. Uh, the V10 is gone, twin turbo V8, three electric motors. Uh, it's a technological tour de force. And with me, I have Mr. Reuben Moore, who is Lamborghini's uh, CTO. And uh, who better to help us take a deep dive into the technicals of this car? Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Hi, it's always a pleasure. Always nice. a pleasure to see you. Nice to see you again. So a lot of work you've done uh, on this car. I've already had a, a stint on track. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit wet, but I can already tell this is a really fast car. Yeah. It does, uh, it's 920 horsepower, Combined, uh, yeah. 0 to 102.7, top speed of 343. So the first question I have for you, yeah. Have you made this too fast? Is it maybe a threat to the Revuelto? Could it cannibalize that car? I think for sure you're right. It's the performance level of this car is really incredible and it's a huge step compared to the predecessor, the Huracan. Yeah. That ended up at in the maximum, let me say, level to 640 horsepower. So it's clear that it's exceeding its segment. But for regarding the comparison of the Revuelto, I'm not scared. Why? Because for two reasons. First of all, the Revuelto is still with a natural aspirated V12, an iconic flagship. It's, all, it's more a kind of piece of art. Secondly, on, from the application side, the cars drive so differently. The mm. Revuelto is more the neutral, let me say, very, it's a status to come with the Revuelto and it's driving very easy, very emotional, but also very neutral. Mm. This car is more the, the car that you take for a windy mountain road, the car that is engaging you or encouraging you to play a little bit around. Mm. The car is more two-wheel drive bias compared to the Revuelto. So the characters are completely different. Therefore, I'm not scared in a comparison. The best thing is you buy both. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, of course, yes. And uh, the customers who can buy one of these can probably buy two. So I suppose there is that point. Yeah. And uh, another point, uh, another observation is that you have obviously a lot of electronics and uh, probably more computing power than the space shuttle in this car. But it, it, you don't feel like you're communicating. I've only had the one stint yeah. but, uh, in the wet, but I can already glean that uh, the car still feels quite analog. It talks to you. Yeah. You kind of know when you're uh, exceeding or, or approaching the grip limit. Yeah. So it, it feels uh, quite tactile in yeah. that sense. Yeah, this is something that is a good, uh, one of the best compliment that you give to us, to our team. Because for us, this is the key, to be honest. Because on one hand, the performance level of all the cars, especially the super sports cars, have increased in the last year so significantly that the only opportunity to make it accessible for also for standard customers is to improve a lot on the electronic control side. But there is a but. You have to spend a lot of effort in simulation and fine tuning that everything feels consistent and hum harmonious and not artificial. Mm. And on this, we spend really a lot. We invested a lot also on internal resources, on internal competences to make. I, know, I don't know if you know, but the, the level of strategy, how we control the dynamics of the car, we are developing in house. So the strategy, the control strategy is our our intellectual property because this makes at the end the difference how it feels mm. because what I don't want is at the end in the best case the customer has a smile in the face doesn't recognize anything about what is happening in the car and the car is simply enabling the customer to deploy the potential mm. this is the target right and uh, although it's uh, got a twin turbo V8 three electric motors uh, a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, and then this has the aluminum space frame chassis yeah. rather than the carbon fiber monocoque that the mm -hmm. Revuelto has. But you've kept weight down to 1690 kilograms uh, dry yeah. with the yeah. Allegerita package. Yeah. So that also must have been a challenge to keep the weight down. Yeah, it's a, ch it's a challenge because it's clear that in general as a sports car, you don't want to have additional weight. It's also clear to be honest that if you add hybrid components, you add weight in the car. Um, and the challenge was 
in a lot of fine optimization to bring at least the additional weight delta as much as down as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be honest, I don't know if you confirm perhaps later in the, if you have a more dry stint, you can even charge a little bit better, that the weight is not perceivable, to be honest. No. Some, of, some of the people that have already driven, they even say the car feels more shorter, more compact than the Revuelto, even from the wheelbase, even if the wheelbase in reality is longer. Yeah. But this is exactly based on all the active systems, the active front axle, torque vectoring, and so on and the application we have just uh, speak before. Right, so you mentioned that the uh, electric motors on the front axle, they're mainly for torque vectoring, yeah. not really for adding uh, in, in terms of uh, drive and performance so much. Exactly, I mean, we have, we have the, first of all, the components, the hardware components are exactly the same like in the Revuelto, but the philosophy how we use the front axle is completely different because this car is more, is always first, for, the rear axle dominates to have, let me say, this kind of rotational behavior that the car is more rotating. And therefore, the front axle is mainly used for two things, uh, torque vectoring in the positive sense, but also in the recuperation phase. And the third is the traction, but the traction is, let me say, is on a reduced level compared to the Revuelto because we want to have a little bit more agility in the car. Right. So maybe we can take a uh, walk around to the for back. Sure. That is the uh, business end of this car, seeing yeah, mine as too, uh, uh, that is where the, uh, the heart of the powertrain is. So you mentioned uh, yesterday when we spoke that from a packaging point of view, uh, a twin turbo V6 would have been optimum in terms of the space. But uh, you settled on the V8 because it is, uh, I guess, uh, uh, closer to the V10. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, ended up being the, uh, the route you took. Yeah, I mean, mainly, mainly two arguments. First of all, we said that if I look in the, in the upcoming life cycle, for sure the V8 has, based on the higher displacement, even a bigger power, power potential. This is more the rational side. And the emotional side is that we said for sure a V6 at the moment would be, let me say, from the, from the, from the perceived downsizing point of view too much, you know, could go from the V10 to V6. Right. This, would, uh, this was for us uh, not the right choice. Therefore, power potential as well as, let me say, let's call it emotional, perceived downsizing. Yes. Uh, we said, okay, we stay with the, with the V8, but if we do a V8 twin turbo, yes. we do it by, your, by our own. We do it in a lumber way and we are not modifying an existing engine. So this is really a standalone engine developed from us, built in Santa Agata specifically for this car. And I have to say, this really is a sight, uh, it's a feast for the eyes as well, to be looking at that. And perhaps uh, you can show uh, this uh, angle, uh, Mr. Cameraman. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you can show uh, this, because I think this is really the knockout angle uh, of this car. Yeah, and from a packaging point of view, I see you, you've had to, uh, obviously you've got the, the V8, the twin turbo V8, and then a transverse eight-speed uh, dual clutch yeah, exactly. sit sitting behind exactly. it, right? I mean, the package of this kind of cars, it's very challenging, I have to say, because it's clear you have the engine, you have the gearbox, everyone is, uh, is keeping this in, in mind. What, is not, what only few people are thinking about is if you have a hybrid supercar like this, you need several different cooling circuits. And the cooling circuits are operating on different temperature levels. And for every cooling circuit, for sure, you need, uh, let me say, intercooler, you need, let me say, specific parts, radiators, all these kind of things. Yeah. And to package all these in a shape that is still super flat, from my point of view, also super sexy with, yeah. uh, with the shape, Absolutely. It's, it's a challenge. So the package of these, uh, packaging a car like this, it's not so easy. No, I can imagine, because there's a lot to cram in, yeah. and then you still need uh, space for uh, a couple of two meter tall uh, exactly. occupants inside. Exactly. So, at uh, the heart of this engine, uh, of this uh, car, of course, is that uh, uh, twin turbo V8. So you don't have 10 uh, cylinders, but you have 10,000 RPM, yeah. which is quite a feat. So I think we should probably go across to that uh, engine over there yes. and uh, talk a little about that. Absolutely. So tell me, uh, 10,000 RPM from a twin turbo V8 motor, how did you do that? I mean, for sure, this was uh, a challenge that we gave to ourselves because mainly just, just two sentences why, why we said this 10,000 is so important for us. It's important for two reasons. First of all, 
we didn't want to make another standard V8 twin turbo engine that is already available in from several brands. I mean, this is a like kind, I would not say commodity, but there are a lot of offers on the market. Therefore, we want to go our Lamborghini way. And we ask ourselves, what would be Lambo way? The Lambo way would be to build a turbo engine that is as close as possible to a to race character as, as possible. And therefore, we said, okay, what means a race character? A race character is usually you have high refs, means also you have this high frequency in, let me say, in your sound, and you have a super linear mid ref region, and you have, let me say, enough boost already on the top. Because what we didn't want to do, an engine that lives only based on the torque. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of turbo engines that it's also good for the specific application that you have a high low end torque. And you use the car, you use the engine a little bit like a, like a diesel engine, for instance. You shift sure. early, you use the torque at low revs. But this is not really fitting to our, let me say, brand definition. Therefore, we said, okay, we want to have an engine that is super linear, so you're very reactive. Therefore, also the electric motor on the, on the, on the crankshaft. But also, we want to have this boost on top. And if you look at the size of the turbochargers, they're huge. They are really massive ones. Yeah. You see, it's a hot V, but at the end, the turbochargers are more or less sitting on top, or it's a kind of top mount, you know, because, because they are so huge. Yes. They are one of the biggest turbochargers that is available in the shelf of the supplier. So this, is, this, we, this was the choice based on the fact that we want to have a power curve that is even delivering boost between nine and uh, 10,000 RPM. Amazing. And then you have the feeling if you rev it up, you have the feeling that the car is still accelerating, accelerating. Because what is boring, if you have an engine, you have the, 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 the peak power, and then everything is dropping, then it doesn't, then it's not fun to rev it up. It's not fun to rev a diesel engine up. No. You know, because you use the torque, you shift, you use the torque. This engine, it's fun to rev it up. And this is the reason why we decided to go to the 10. So, but now I've skipped your question, I understood. But I will answer and try to be a little bit shorter. What was the challenge? The challenge are mainly three things. One challenge is engine mechanics. So it's clear you have, if you have a flat crankshaft, if you have this rotational speed, if you have the speed of the pistons, you need a very stiff valve train. You need a short actuation for the, for the chains of the camshafts because otherwise you have oscillations. This is engine mechanics. For instance, we developed together with the supplier a specific coating for the finger follow actuation for the valves. This is a mechanical side. The other side is you have to ensure that you have, have always enough air. So this is the combustion side. If you want to rev with a four liter displacement engine, 10,000, you need a lot of air mm. if you want to have boost at the high revs. These are these colleagues. And the third aspect that you have to manage is since it's a flat crankshaft, you have still quite natural vibrations in the engine and you have to manage the integration in the whole vehicle with small details that sometimes the people think it's, it's easy, but look, you have to decouple every, every cable, you know, because this is fixed on this high pressure pump, for instance, fuel pump. This is fixed to the engine, but the cable somehow has to connect it to the, to the body. And for sure, based on the level of vibrations, you have to, con you have to decouple as best as possible. So the integration in the whole vehicle was then the last big challenge. Mm. And you mentioned that uh, because you have such big turbos on this, that uh, without the hybrid assist, this would be no, undrivable. Undrivable. If you would exclude the electric motor and you have a turbocharger like this, yeah. the, the, the power curve, torque curve would be terrible. Yeah. I mean, for sure you can drive, but it's, it's but far away from being linear yeah. and far away from being because uh, 30 percent of the of the ref region would not be used would yeah. be useless therefore to be honest i always speak it's a b turbo v8 yes but for my interpretation it's a b turbo v8 hybrid because you always have to consider it in combination with this electric motor right yeah if you remove the electric motor you have to downgrade the um, the ref limit and downsize the turbochargers like for instance we did in the temerario gt3 the race car ah yes because via reglement, it's not a loud hybrid, so we remove the hybrid, but the consequence is for sure smaller turbochargers. If you go to smaller turbochargers, you have to reduce the rev limit because you have not, you're not getting enough air right. with higher revs. So having the hybrid system <coughs> gave you the perfect opportunity exactly. to build an engine yeah. like this. Yeah, therefore, I'm also saying the hybrid is not, let me say, a, a kind of disadvantage. The hybrid is, in this car, the enabler for this fantastic engine 
and also the enabler for the driving dynamics that the car drives as intuitive as you have described before. Lovely. Well, speaking of driving dynamics, I'm about to get back out there to uh, give your new beast a bit more of a workout. Yeah. So thank you very much. That was a very interesting technical deep dive. Thank and you. Uh, I'll see you later in the day. Have fun. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.